In this lecture, we're going to take a few minutes to orient ourselves to the basic structure and characteristics of the periodic table. All right, so first off, the periodic table essentially provides a sorting or an arrangement of the elements. And this sorting or arrangement is something that we're going to be exploring in greater and greater detail throughout the course. First off, there's actually three main classes of compounds that the periodic table is arranged into um, that I want to talk about first. So the first arrangement is going to be made based on the properties of the elements. And there's three general categories of elemental properties. So these categories, you may have heard of them before, are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Okay, so let's take a minute to examine each one of these. So metals, first up metals. Metals are compounds that have the property of being shiny, malleable, and good conductors of heat and electricity, among other properties. But these are really the main ones um, that I want us to focus on. So by shiny, I mean, you know, what we're talking about is that metallic luster. Okay. So that metallic luster. So if you look at you know, a piece of you know, gold or silver, it has that little metallic sheen to it. So uh, that is one of the properties that is common to uh, almost all metals. Uh, malleable. Uh, to be malleable means that you can bend it, shape it, you know, turn that metal into uh, you know, any different form that you could you want. And of course, a good conductor of heat and electricity means that thermal energy or electrical current readily passes through that substance. Okay, so metals share all of these properties. Okay, and nonmetals, you know, are kind of you know the, the opposite of metals in many ways. They are typically dull, right? They're not shiny. They're dull. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. And sometimes we'll see that they're actually uh, brittle as well. Okay. Um, and so when we're, when we're classifying metals and nonmetals and we're laying out this set of properties, we are talking in general. And we'll, we'll see throughout the class that there are some, you know, you know, some exceptions uh, to some of these rules. Right? But by and large, metals and nonmetals are characterized by these properties you know, on the screen here. And metalloids are essentially compounds that have properties that fall somewhere in between. So metalloids... Uh, literally means resembling metals, right? But they're not actually metals. So what we'll see is that these metalloids uh, do conduct heat and electricity moderately well. So they're not as good of conductors as you know, the metals, um, but they're not you know, so-called insulators like we oftentimes see with the nonmetals or compounds that don't conduct heat and electricity. So they're somewhere in between, okay? And we'll see in general that these metalloids will have some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals. Okay, so they're, again, they're just somewhere in between. Okay, so with these three different classes of compounds in mind, now let's turn our attention to the periodic table and take a closer look at this arrangement. So we've all, hopefully at this point, seen the periodic table before. This specific periodic table has a different coloring depending on the properties of those elements re represented. So the first thing we can see, let's look at the yellow colored elements, right? The yellow colored elements are metals, metallic compounds, okay? And you can see that actually the vast majority of the periodic table are metallic compounds, right? The, a lot of the elements that we uh, you know, naturally occur are metals. And so this whole region here, you can kind of color it in, this whole region in yellow are all metals, okay? In addition, we have these F block elements down here that we won't be spending too much time with these guys at the bottom of the periodic table down here um, in this course, uh, but uh, when you go on in your chemistry studies, you might spend some more time with these guys. So the metallic compounds, um, are down here. You can kind of think of it as the bottom left of the periodic table. And we can switch colors here. We can go up to the nonmetal compounds. Nonmetal compounds are these guys up here at the top. 
and then the metalloids are the group of uh, compounds, elements, I should say, going right down the diagonal, separating the metals and nonmetals. Okay, so it's pretty neat how all the periodic table, uh, how it is arranged uh, canonically, you know, separates these different compounds based on their properties. All right, and it turns out that the periodic table even goes further than that, and there are additional uh, so-called periodic laws uh, that basically, um, you know, we, when we look at this periodic table, right, there are different orderings and groupings and arrangements that basically group these elements together as periodic functions of their atomic number, okay? And remember, when we're looking at that periodic table, right, that atomic number is this little number right up there, top left, telling us the number of protons. All right, a little recap there. So we've got atomic number or number of protons. Okay, so we'll find the periodic laws, uh, you know, numerous different periodic laws, and you'll see periodic trends uh, pop up. And we'll see the, the first arrangement here in this periodic table. And if you look at these numbers, these uh, atomic numbers and how they're arranged, we see an increasing order, okay? An increasing order. So if we move from left to right across the periodic table, right? Then we have an increase in the atomic number. Right, increasing atomic number from left to right. Okay. Now, if we look down a period, uh, a column in the periodic table, what we find is that elements with similar properties are grouped in each one of these columns. So, if I circle this first column, right, what we'll see is that these elements in this column, lithium, sodium, potassium, all these guys will share many similar properties, all right? And the same thing goes, we could, you know, circle any one of these columns, right? You go down these columns, right? And we will see similar properties of these elements, all right? And now we'll go into the specifics of what these properties are, again, as we move through the course. But for right now, what I want you guys to see is, uh, you know, some of the, the basic naming conventions we use to talk about these different uh, you know, columns of the periodic table. So the columns, these 18 verti vertical columns, where each one of those 18 uh, columns is a grouping of elements with similar properties, we call those groups on the periodic table. And if you look at the rows on the periodic table, we have the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, all the way down to the seventh row down here, way down here at the bottom, right? right? This grouping into the rows, right, we'll, we'll explore some other trends of this again later on, but for right now, I want you to remember that each one of these rows is called a period, right? So we've got seven periods on the periodic table. So we have groups are the columns, Okay, and periods are the rows. All right, so we've got a total of seven periods and 18 columns. Okay, now the last thing I want to touch on real quick here um, in our little introduction to the periodic table is some common names that we use to classify uh, different groups in the periodic table. So it turns out that elements from certain groups in the periodic table, you know, we see them all the time. They have such strong similarities uh, that you know, we've given them that entire column a certain name, right? And so the ones that I want you to just go ahead and memorize here are the groups that I have listed right here. And I've got the periodic table arranged, uh, listing out the names of uh, you know these most important groups um, in terms of the you know at least the ones that I want you to remember remember the names of okay so the first group over here the first column right are the so-called alkali metals okay 
So any compound over here, sodium, potassium, all these guys, right? They're all alkali metals, right? That first group. The second group are similar to the alkali metals in many ways, but have some very important differences. And they're called alkaline earth metals, right? So alkaline earth metals. So remember, once you get to the second column, we have earth in there. So alkaline earth metals is that second group, um, second column on the periodic table. Then this whole region in the middle here, right? This whole region in here, we call these guys transition metals. So that whole block kind of separating the taller columns on either side are referred to as transition metals. And then over here on this end, I want you to focus in on this, the last two columns, halogens, column 17, and noble gases, column 18, okay? So these five groups, and of course this was the transition metals as a whole block on the periodic table are all the names that I want you guys to you know essentially have memorized here okay and as I said we're going to be learning more and more about the different properties of the uh, elements from each of these groups and all their similarities um, and and even exploring beyond that but you know, this little mini lecture gives you a, at least an overview of the general arrangement of that periodic table, the idea of the group, idea of the period, and how the periodic table in many, many ways is arranged to help us understand and actually even predict the properties of different elements.